my name is Ramin Ahmadi. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm working at Content and Code, and you can follow me on Twitter, GitHub, or my blog. And as you know, uh, the idea of uh, developing custom modern form is one of the top three user voice ideas, and hopefully we will uh, be able to have them in the near future. And as Risa said, is not a recommended way, to, uh, way of uh, doing this. It will. Uh, you know, I was really curious how I can, um, you know, have something similar so I can redirect my forms to different pages and basically have uh, custom forms for different content types. So the only way to achieve that was, uh, you know, using a hacky way that, that I use jQuery to just, uh, you know, having custom custom code uh, and binding uh, them to um, unclick uh, function of some elements that you will see in the code. So um, if I want to show you how it works, uh, this is the list I created, and this is the common view sets um, a button that I have here for defining our custom forms. If I click on that, it shows uh, this panel that you can uh, define uh, your, your custom forms. Uh, before that, I'm going to show you the pages that I created. So this is a display um, display form page that I used um, uh, this web part, uh, React List Form, that you can download it from uh, the repository. It's already available. Uh, and also, we have uh, similar functionality for this page as an edit form. Uh, and I also use a Power Apps web part. So uh, I, I added to this uh, new page that's going to be our new form. Uh, so here uh, you can select your uh, content type, for example, web part. I'm going to, uh, for display form, I enable it first and I'm going to use this URL. I'm going to say new tab, uh, and also there are some tokens available, so you can pass it as a query string parameters. For example, I'm going to say item ID equal to one of these token, which will be item ID. And you can save this. I'm going to have similar configuration for the edit forms. and the new form as current window. Okay, uh, so if we just refresh the page, it should um, override all the uh, functionality for the new form, edit, and display form. So if we click on the web part, it just redirects to this page that we defined as our new, uh, new form. So if I just add a new item here. Sorry guys, I don't know why this is being blacked out. Uh, so I just wanted to show you this is a uh, uh, this is a new page. So if you go back to the page, uh, there was some problem with the Power Apps form. So if we click on one of these uh, items that has a web part content type, I click on Edit. It just uh, redirect the form, and here you can see that item ID passed to this page as a query string. And these are the fields that is being filled in the in this web part. And also, if I click uh, on each item, it's going to open the display form in a in a really new uh, new page. But it doesn't affect uh, the other content types. For example, uh, we didn't touch the extension content type. So if we just click on edit, you can see the default form just uh, pop up. Or if we click on the extension here, it just uh, use the default forms. Uh, or you can open the uh, display form as well. And so 
this is the demo uh, about how it works. Uh, just, so let me just go through the code and show you how it's been done. There are some highlights uh, that I want to show you. The first one is the assets that I have here. This is a list instance that's going to keep all the settings for each uh, list. So you can use this uh, common set, uh, common view sets in um, you know uh, different lists and keep all the settings for that list. And when you add this app uh, to a site collection, it's going to be created automatically this list. And also we have uh, this settings panel so this is a fab fabric ui panels uh, that uh, is responsible for uh, adding or updating these uh, configurations to that list that i mentioned before and we also have a list service class that uses pmpjs to uh, do the updates or adding the items or getting the content types from the list to so you can uh, you know select them uh, from the panel and here is the uh, code that I just mentioned before. And as you know, uh, as I mentioned before, and also Vesa mentioned, this is a really hacky way. So as you can see, I just use uh, jQuery to bind the uh, click event to each button. For example, ID to open or new buttons. So we can redirect uh, redirect them to the pages that we define in the settings panel. So here in the redirect, we just uh, check if it's uh, it needs to be open in a new page or just the current page, current window, basically. And uh, these are tokens that are going to be replaced uh, when the user just click on each button. Uh, so yeah, here is uh, the sample, and hope you enjoy that and. Uh, back to you with some. Thanks. Uh, let's not actually don't stop sharing anything. So let's let's talk about the slides. So the whole point uh, of this one is that we, you wanted to provide a custom editing, a viewing, and a new experience. And and basically, what uh, Ramin then did here is that he implemented a an extension uh, which we can use in a list level to configure uh, where where the user is redirected again uh, if you click a new item or a edit an item and then a new page is where we have a bit part which is reacting on those things what's happening now the challenge of actually making this uh, this way it, it does work um, but it's not guaranteed that it will work tomorrow and uh, the reason yes. for that one is that we're using that hacky uh, javascript jquery uh, selection uh, based on the DOM structure of the page. And this is a, how would I put it? It is a classic way of extending and modifying SharePoint, also in a classic SharePoint experience. So you basically modify the, the DOM structure of the page. But the challenge of doing that is really the fact that when we change or, or release a new version of the list and libraries, um, we haven't actually given our developers and customers and partners an agreement that our UI would be an API, because it isn't. Because we cannot guarantee that the, the DOM structure and the DOM uh, path, which is used in the jQuery for matching the edit button or uh, as an example, would be exactly the same in the new version of the list and libraries. And we can't exactly. guarantee that at this point. Um, and that's why the sample also is saying clearly on the on the readme that you should not do this in production. Now, that's and again that we used to do that in a classic SharePoint, uh, in a, for by modifying the the let's say a sub create sub site creation or links and all of that stuff. Um, and yes, there are solutions in the production for doing that. But the challenge of that of doing this, it is really the fact that we don't know if it's going to work tomorrow. For SharePoint framework extensions, which are the header and footer and the list view command sets and the extension field uh, customizers, we actually guarantee that regardless of the UI modifications, what we do, uh, those extensions will work. And this shows a requirement for us to actually implement uh, a custom list and custom view and custom editing experience also for lists, um, like Ramin was uh, showing as well. Do you have Ramin, by the way, the, the user voice uh, entry somewhere? Uh, it is number three right now in the user voice uh, for having an opportunity of, of modifying uh, the the list view, the user voice entry. Uh, do you have the user voice entry somewhere close? Uh, yes. There we go. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, so you can easily find it using Bing or Google uh, by using the title. Uh, so, um, but this is now number three in the uh, user voice entries, and this is really around the fact that 
Um, yes, you can use Power Apps and you can use Flow to modify or Power Apps to modify the, the user experience. But the challenge of doing that is that it's again a new development environment and then it has licensing implications. If you don't like those things, you would like to just override uh, the list experience by providing a web part, which will take care of the editing and displaying and, and new form. Um, so we're looking into that. Um, uh, it is actually highly, it seems to be that it's quite likely that we will make that happen, uh, but in the way that you overwrite the whole list experience. So not bits and pieces of the list, list experience, the out-of-the-box one, rather you truly are able to have a bit part, uh, which is say that, hey, this is a taking ownership of this list, and then the, the web part will have an indication, is it an edit or new or uh, display functionality. That sounds probably what it should be, uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward on, on, on making that happen uh, sooner or later. Again, I can't provide any any ETA on the insights when, and maybe I can't even promise to we, when we make that happen, but um, it, it is being discussed all the time. Perfect. Huge, um, but until 10, still, if possible, don't do what Ramin is doing in this demo. Uh, but then again, if your customer, this is one of those things where um, when I was a consultant, uh, then you need to figure out and you need to get clever. If your customer is saying that, hmm, well, if I can't make this happen, I will go to another provider and I will go to another platform. Well, that's not also what we want. So. Yes, it's a hacky way, definitely not a recommended way, definitely not a long term, long term way how it should be done. But maybe every now and then we need to make compromises. The world, unfortunately, is not black and white. So again, not recommended making this happen, should not do this in production, but we can't block you for doing this from the production if that is truly required. So that's one of the reasons why we need to provide a similar capability out of the box as well. Good. Um, I think that's it for Ramin from your side. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for helping thank you. On, on pointing out uh, what I was wanted to point out as well. Mm -hmm.